Hello gardener, welcome to my channel. Today we're diving into a beginner friendly gardening tutorial on growing cauliflower from seed all the way to harvest. I'll show you every step of the way and provide expert tips so you can grow an abundance of cauliflower in your own garden at home. If you're new here, hello and welcome. My name is Jara and I teach people how to garden and grow food. This video is one of many garden guides that can be found on my channel where I share my knowledge about growing food and other edible plants. So make sure you subscribe to my channel, that way you don't miss any of my tutorials. All right, let's get started. When you're shopping for cauliflower, flower seeds, you will find that there's a lot of variety. Therefore, let's start this growing guide with a discussion on cultivar selection and differences between cauliflower varieties, so that way you pick the best one to grow in your garden. Let's start with shape. There is heading versus sprouting versus spiralized, also called Romanesco types of cauliflower. Heading types form one big crown at the middle of the plant. This is what you typically see at the grocery store. This crown is made up of several florets, which in turn are clusters of tiny unopened flowers. We are basically eating unopened flowers. Once you harvest the crown, that's pretty much it. Cauliflower doesn't produce side shoots at all, or at least as much as broccoli does after the main crown is harvested. The sprouting types of cauliflower form more loose and long stemmed kind of florets. You commonly find this kind at the Asian grocery stores. They also have a more crunchy texture compared to regular cauliflower. Then there is Romanesco, which is actually a hybrid between broccoli and cauliflower. It looks so cool though. It forms these spirals of dense florets that look like fractals. They have a beautiful neon green color with flavor more similar to broccoli, but a more crispy texture like cauliflower. We are all used to seeing the standard white cauliflower at the grocery store. A standard white cauliflower cultivar that has performed very well for me is called Snowball. But there are also some purple cultivars, like my personal favorite one called Violetta Italia, right here, which is an heirloom. Or there's a lot of hybrid cultivars that are purple, green, or yellow. I have grown all the different colors of cauliflower. Personally, I noticed that the color type have a more buttery or nutty flavor, but nothing too significantly different than regular white cauliflower. In general, cauliflower is not as heat tolerant as broccoli, so growing it in the south is challenging, but possible if you get the timing right. If I plant too early or too late, or I just have an unusually warm winter, it easily bolts, which means it will go straight to flowering instead of forming a nice tight head of cauliflower. In my experience, cauliflower hybrids do grow a little bit better in warm climates than the heirlooms, except for Violetta Italia, which which is a monster and grows huge sized heads of cauliflower for me, even bigger than what I harvest out of my broccoli plant. Because of that, it's like my number one favorite cauliflower cultivar and you guys are gonna hear me talk about it all the time. It is usually said that the darker versions of vegetables have a higher heat tolerance than its regular counterparts. And I agree, Violetta di Italia is a dark purple cauliflower and it seems to fit that theory well. Lastly, when growing cauliflower, you may have heard about blanching the heads. This is really only important when growing white colored cauliflower because if the sun's rays hit the white color, it causes a gray or purple discoloration. Still totally edible, just doesn't look all perfect and white. To prevent that, we blanch the heads by covering it with leaves from the same plant. If you don't want to worry about your heads of cauliflower getting discolored, then don't grow the white ones. Instead, grow the colored cultivars like this Violetta di Italia purple cauliflower or the green or yellow types. They do not require any blanching at all. You don't have to worry about folding the leaves over or any of that because they don't get discolored when the sun's rays hit them. Just another reason why I love to grow the Violetta Italia cauliflower. All right, let's talk about sowing seeds. In general, it takes about 12 weeks for these to be ready to transplant from seed. So you're going to backtrack 12 weeks from whatever your target date is of transplanting them into the garden. If you're in garden zones seven and below, like the colder zones, you're going to transplant these out into your garden as soon as your last average spring frost date has passed. Therefore, you have to grow these indoors 12 weeks before that. If you're in garden zones eight and up that have very hot summers, and very mild winters like me here in Florida, you're gonna plant these in the fall. Just to give you like a real accurate way of knowing when to transplant these, it can be kind of tricky trying to figure out what month during fall should you be transplanting these out? Because if they're exposed to too much warmth, they'll just bolt or the seedlings will stay super tiny. So what I recommend is that you go to a website called plantmaps.com, you put in your zip code, and at the very bottom, there's a chart that will show your average maximum high temperature per month and the lowest temperature per month. Locate the month during fall where the max average high temperature is at 85 or below. Using my garden as an example, I'm here in Florida, zone 9B. The first month where that occurs is the month of October. So that is the perfect time to transplant all of these into my garden. Therefore, I'm going to backtrack 12 weeks from October, which lands me in the month of July or maybe even early August to sow seeds indoors. It has to be indoors only because the month of July and August are extremely hot. The weather outside is hitting 90 degrees or even sometimes 100 degrees Fahrenheit outside, and that will definitely stunt your little seedlings. 
cases. So in all cases, pretty much, you're gonna be sewing these from seed inside. And I have a full tutorial showing you my whole indoor seed starting setup, all the supplies and things that I recommend, along with expert tips on how to grow lush, beautiful, healthy transplants. So I will link that below in the description. But in general, I just take a small little mini greenhouse and I attach some grow lights or shop lights. A lot of times I use shop lights that are 5,000 Kelvins or higher, that's for the daylight range. And I just zip tie them to the bottom of the shelves. I put that inside of my house where the temperature stays around 72 degrees Fahrenheit and they germinate and grow very well for me. Remember, as soon as anything germinates, it needs a bright source of sunlight to continue growing. If you notice that your seedlings are kind of leaning towards one direction or very thin, that means they're stretching, trying to reach for some light. So make sure you just provide a nice bright light source for them. All right, so now that you know when you're supposed to sow your seeds, let me show you how to do it. For anything in the brassicas family, I really like to use four inch pot sizes. This will house them for the whole 12 week growing period so I don't have to waste time potting up. I find that seeds in the brassicas family tend to germinate very well. So I'm not concerned about having to sow them densely and then thin out, you know, the weakest seedlings and all that kind of thing. I literally just put two little seeds per four inch container and trust me, one out of two of those seeds are gonna germinate. So I just put one seed on either side of this little container, cover it with a tiny bit of soil, like a quarter inch, not very much. Pat it down so the seeds are locked in place and then keep this nice and moist. You should see germination in around three to five days if you have good seed. This seedling right here is 11 weeks old. So we're almost at that 12 week mark but they've grown so fast for me that I'm gonna start planting them into my garden right now. As soon as your seedlings germinate, they're going to need light. Try to maintain the light about three or four inches from the top of your seedling. As they grow and get taller, move that light source up. When the seedlings sprout, the first set of two leaves are called cotyledons. Those are just something the plant hurries up and pushes out so it can start photosynthesizing. But that's not the final or like true leaves that represent the plant. The next set of two leaves is now what we call the true leaves. They should look something more similar to this. As soon as you see the true leaves you can start fertilizing and I highly recommend that you do that with your seedlings so that way they grow as fast as possible and they get nice and big like this. I like to use a liquid fertilizer for all of my seedlings and I just mix it at half the strength of whatever the directions say. So for example if the directions say mix two tablespoons per gallon of water I'm just going to put one tablespoon per gallon of water because you don't want to risk overdosing your little seedlings and in 12 weeks they should look very similar to this. All right so now I'm going to show you how to transplant them. I just so happen to be growing a lot of my brassicas in grow bags this season in, but you can follow the same techniques for transplanting no matter how you're growing them whether that be in the ground in containers in raised beds it's all the same first find the best spot to grow them in your garden they do require full sun if you're in the south like me here in florida where full sun is like extra extra sun then it's okay to plant these in a spot that get a lot of bright morning sun but some afternoon shade that will really help decrease the amount of bolting and just help these plants survive and produce a little bit longer for you in your garden here's a violetta d'italia called Cauliflower. This is why this is one of my favorite ones. It always just grows so fantastic for me. The seedlings are the biggest out of the bunch of all the brassicas that I'm growing. Make sure you're growing in some decent soil, something that is rich in organic matter because they do require a lot of nutrients to output and produce for you. You're probably going to ask me, what did I use to fill up all these grow bags? To be honest with you, I go to my local Home Depot and I buy the cheapest bags of compost that I can possibly find. I don't know the name of the brand, but they're a white and yellow bag. They're super cheap. I've been using it for years and I don't mix it with anything else. I just put straight compost in here. I have come to realize through comments from a lot of you fellow gardeners that you cannot find that same brand of compost at your local Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever you're shopping. So just know you might not be able to find it. If that's the case, use whatever you can find. You can use potty mix or even garden soil mix. This is a 10 gallon size grow bag and I'm only gonna put one plant per 10 gallon size grow bag because these things need some space. If they're too crammed together, they really can't expand and grow nice big bushy plants and that's going to reduce production. If you're planting in the ground or in rows, space them anywhere between 12 to 18 inches apart so each plant has enough room. Since I'm growing in grow bags, just eyeball it. <laughs> Dig a hole the same size as your pot and always always put some kind of a fertilizer in the planting hole. Since I have tons of this Espoma brand tomato tone almost at all times here in my garden, I use it to fertilize all of my tomatoes so I constantly have a ton of this available. But just use whatever granular fertilizer you prefer. Mix it in with the 
soil here so those roots don't come in direct contact with that fertilizer it can burn your plant and then i'm going to add a big handful of blood meal this is an organic fertilizer that's really high in nitrogen it's going to help these little seedlings start putting on a lot of new growth again the goal is to have nice big size plants with lots of leaves since this is organic i don't really have to worry about measuring it's not going to overdose or burn my plants if you're using synthetic stuff then follow the directions and that's it in a couple weeks you should start seeing new growth it's been two weeks since i planted this cauliflower in these grow bags they've put on a little bit of new growth it's been one month since i planted this violetta d'italia cauliflower in these grow bags they grow really fast look how big this one has got already just from that little seedling this is the violetta d'italia about one and a half months after transplanting all right so let's talk about fertilizing cauliflower you're going to start fertilizing after you start noticing your seedlings have started putting on new growth which usually happens around the three or four week mark after transplanting i really love to use an organic granular fertilizer i like to sprinkle about one eighth of a cup every week or every 10 days or so to keep the nutrient supply very consistent which will help my cauliflower plants put on a lot of growth very quickly and get a thicker stem which is going to help yield a bigger head of cauliflower now i only recommend an organic fertilizer if you're going to be fertilizing this often because if you use organic stuff you don't risk burning or basically overdosing your plants if you're using a synthetic type of fertilizer please follow the directions on that packaging i will keep fertilizing every 10 days or so for the first two months of growth in my garden after that i switch to something higher in potassium and phosphorus which will help support production of the flowers because that is what we are eating the unopened flowers of cauliflower i will fertilize about once every four weeks until the end of my season we are two and a half months from transplanting and the violetta d'italia is starting to produce its first head now let's talk about keeping our cauliflower plants healthy while they're growing in the garden the number one pest i get are aphids they start congregating on the lower leaves and then they start moving up the plant i like to use neem oil or spray with some organic insecticidal soap usually when you have an aphid infestation there's also a lot of ants because they actually like to farm and protect the aphids since they secrete a sweet substance so treat for the ants as well by just setting up some ant traps or putting some granules around the area you might get some cabbage or pickle worms or any other kind of worm that likes to eat leaves for things in the brassicas family if it's a small infestation you can just hand pick them off your plants but here in florida i usually get big infestations of worms so i like to spray with bt at the very first sign of worm damage to quickly knock the population down as every day goes by the population increases which will require more spraying so just stay on top of it i will link below to the same bt spray that i use here in my garden you could also cover your plants with row covers but for that to be effective you have to make sure you seal it really good and tight so no worms or anything can get in there i'm not good with keeping up with it and ensuring that it's sealed so that is not my preferred method but if you're good at it definitely try it in your garden you might start to see yellow spots or brown dried up sections on the leaves this is one of many different types of leaf diseases i just like to remove the older leaves that are heavily infected to slow down the spread it also helps to spray with one cup of hydrogen peroxide per gallon of water to clean and disinfect the leaves never water your plants overhead because this keeps the surface of the leaves wet which causes growth of leaf disease pathogens like powdery mildew which is a fungus lastly let's talk about watering cauliflower plants if the plants are too stressed out from dry soil or heat it causes them to start flowering sooner rather than later when i notice that my cauliflower plants are starting to form heads i check the soil moisture every single day by just doing a finger test i just stick my pointer finger into the soil and if it's dry to my second knuckle then i know it could use some water i grow cauliflower during the winter and very early spring months here in my florida garden which just so happens to be our dry season so i have to pay extra attention to soil moisture i end up having to water these plants almost every day keeping the soil moisture consistent really helps these plants put more time into growing bigger heads before they start entering the flowering stage all right we are now three months after transplanting all of this cauliflower and i have several heads that are forming it's the perfect opportunity to show you how to know when they are ready for harvest look at how big this one is this is by far my most favorite cauliflower cultivar the violetta italia and i have seeds on my website if you want to try growing it it always produces massive massive heads this is even bigger than the broccoli plants that i grow if i could just choose two brassicas things to grow in my garden it would be this cauliflower and pure because they both produce so much 
All right, so how do we know this is ready for harvest and that it is grown as big as possible before it starts entering the flowering stage? You simply have to check up on these heads every single day. So every morning I come out here just to check how separated these florets are getting. As of today, you can see that the florets are still pretty tight. There's not a lot of space in between them. As each day goes by, the spacing gets a little bit more pronounced, especially starting on the bottom and kind of going up. So I really like to check out the bottom florets and when and I notice that a bunch of them start to have little spaces like this, then they're ready to harvest. This head of cauliflower isn't going to get much bigger than this. It's just going to start separating even more and more, which is not the best eating quality. So this right here is a perfect example of when I need to harvest this head. Here's an example of one that I let go for a couple days because I really wanted to show you guys an example of what it looks like. As you can see, each floret is really starting to separate and you can see the stems of each one. This is still completely edible and I'm definitely going to harvest this today because it's going to start flowering within the next maybe week or so. Here's a side view so you can really see how much they've started to separate. And all of these cauliflower plants are kind of at their own pace, meaning that there's some that are still forming like this one right here. There's this one that is almost ready. I'm just going to give it maybe two more days or so. And then this one right here, which is definitely in that perfect stage for me to harvest. All right, so let's harvest this one right here. And I know you're going to ask me, where do you cut on the stem here? So I like to push down the leaves so I can get a clear picture of what's going on here and you just follow the stem as far as it'll go before you hit the plant so I'm going to cut about right here and I find that using scissors is probably the easiest way to cut it off it rolled down but I caught it isn't it huge that is one massive head of cauliflower once you harvest the head of cauliflower, it's not gonna grow any more side shoots, like what broccoli does. So at this point, I'm gonna yank out these plants and plant something else in this spot. But remember, the entire plant of cauliflower is edible, the leaves, the stems, everything. So you can definitely eat this, but I'm gonna feed this to my chickens. I also have some white cauliflower ready for harvest, which is the perfect opportunity to show you the process of blanching the heads so they don't get discolored. When growing the white colored types of cauliflower, you have to blanch the head by covering it with its its own leaves. I like to secure the leaves in place with some clothespins. It prevents the sun's rays from hitting the head of cauliflower, which causes a weird gray or purple type of discoloration. Keep the head of cauliflower covered the whole time from when you start to notice that the head is forming all the way to harvest time. This is an example of the discoloration caused when the sun's rays hit white colored cauliflower. This is a white cultivar, not purple at all, but it's having this purple coloration here. I did not notice <laughs> this cauliflower head was forming here so I didn't cover it up with the leaves while it was forming to protect it. Now this is just a cosmetic thing. This whole head of cauliflower is still 100% completely edible. It does not affect flavor or texture either. But I'm going to harvest this one anyways. It's starting to separate and go to the flowering stage. I finished harvesting the ones that are ready for harvest today. Don't they just look delicious? There are still a lot more forming on the plants which I will harvest throughout the next few weeks. Thank you for coming along with me over the last few months as I grew my cauliflower this season. I hope my tips will help you be successful growing cauliflower in your own garden. If you have any cauliflower tips for me, please share your knowledge in the comments below. I learned just as much from you guys as you do from me. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up. That helps my channel out more than you know. Happy gardening and I'll see you in the next video.